Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to look at a rather interesting mechanism challenge that one of my subscribers brought to me. Here we have a rather complex looking lactone, which is just another way of calling a cyclic ester. And this lactone is reacting with an acid, and it's giving us another lactone. If I count my carbons real quick, I will see that I have seven carbons in my left molecule and only four carbons in my molecule to the right, which means that during this mechanism something fell off our molecule and we'll have to figure out what exactly that thing was. So looking at this reaction, my first instinct would be to analyze where exactly the initial protonation is going to happen, because you see we are reacting with the acid and if we have an acid present, well, that means that something is going to be protonated. In terms of the targets for our protonation, we have quite a few of those. We have one, two, three, four different oxygens where the protonation can occur, which means that we have a lot of potentials here. However, I'm not just going to blindly go and protonate everything and see where it takes me. Whenever I'm analyzing mechanism, I'm trying to come up with a strategic way how to analyze what's going on there, and I'm pretty much trying to look a couple of steps ahead of time and do it sort of like in the chess when I'm looking at a few steps ahead and see what that gives me. And by doing a simple analysis like that, I will see that the best position for me to protonate is actually going to be this oxygen over here. Let me show you. So since I am drawing the mechanism, I'm going to properly start by showing the protonation here, and the oxygen is going to grab the proton from my tazilic acid like so, giving me the following protonated ester. Now, from this point we have two potential outcomes how this protonated ester can react further. One, I will show it with a blue arrow, is going to be the intramolecular cyclization where this oxygen is attacking my um, ester like so, and from there we are going to get another ring. Another one, and I will show it in a purple arrow, is going to be lactone opening. So in that case we are going to get something of this sort. And so depending which way I am going to go, I am going to get the two corresponding intermediates here, the blue intermediate and the purple intermediate. If I look at my bottom purple intermediate here, that's going to be a dead end, because the only things that we can do here is either go backwards or potentially do this cyclization over here, which will give me another acetal, looking like this, and this intermediate is not taking me anywhere closer to my final product, to where I want to be, so that is a dead end. And since this direction is a dead end, I'm just not going to be pursuing it any further, because I know that in order to get anywhere from this point, I would probably have to have a whole bunch of unnecessary steps, and that's not going to be the most efficient and the most reasonable mechanism. So I'm going to go back to my blue version. Now, the important thing that I'm noticing about my blue version over here, that this part of my system with the oxygen down here is actually almost the same as what I have right over here, and the oxygen that I have over here is probably this guy. So that actually takes me much closer to my final product than it might seem. So that means that what I need to figure out now is how to get rid of this bottom part of the molecule and I will essentially have the rest of my mechanism. And probably the next most reasonable step here at this point is going to be a proton transfer to take the proton from over here and get it onto this oxygen to convert that part into to a living group. I'm going to abbreviate this part as a plus minus H plus, indicating that there are two proton transfer steps using some sort of a chaperone. So we could say that something like tosylate comes in and picks up this proton over here, and then another equivalent of mitazilic acid comes in and protonates this oxygen like so. Ultimately, what that gives me is the following intermediate. And then from this point, I can actually break the bond right over here by simply taking the electrons from one of my oxygens, let's say it's going to be this one, and breaking it up like this way. Now, if I look at the intermediate that I got after this step, I can see that this part of the molecule is essentially my product. So what I need to do, I will have to get rid of this proton over here and also have this part of the molecule falling off. Well, in order to do that, I would have to have another couple of proton transfers. Now, 
this proton is going to be disappearing and I will have to protonate this oxygen over here. Like in the previous case, we can use some sort of a chaperone, like the tosylate, to pull the proton off and then protonate the oxygen that we need to be protonated, which gives me the following intermediate. And then from this point, to break the last bond that I need broken, which is going to be this bond, I'm just going to have the sort of like an assisted ionization happening like this, giving me my final product. And of course, as a co-product in this case, we are going to end up with protonated acetone, I'm going to show it like this, which after it loses its proton, going to just give me an acetone molecule. So what has fallen off my molecule is just an equivalent of acetone like that. And that's our mechanism. So when you're working on mechanisms like this one, it might be tempting to just, you know, protonate something and go with it and see what happens. And while this approach might get you somewhere, it's likely to either get you into a dead end or maybe make your mechanism take a very strange turn or just completely take you towards some sort of incorrect final product. So what I suggest is try a step or two and brainstorm from that point and see where it's taking you. If you see that your mechanism is taking a wrong turn or taking you towards the wrong product, well, try something different. There is no shame in going back and tracing your steps and rethinking part of your mechanism. With more practice, you'll start seeing chunks of the mechanism few steps ahead. But you'll need to build that skill first. And until then, brainstorm mercilessly. And never go with the first option and just brute force your way through the mechanism. Brute forcing your mechanism and forcing the formation of your product regardless of what's reasonable, is the absolutely worst thing that you can do. And unfortunately, I see a lot of students fall into that trap, so don't do that. So what did you think about this mechanism? Did you know how to do it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for daily organic chemistry content. Check out this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.